Good morning and welcome to bringing Good morning and welcome to bringing the zoo to you marsupial edition. I'm Dana and I am the lead animal care specialist here at the Australia house. Today we're going to be talking about marsupials. Uh, at the Australia house we have three different kinds of marsupials. We have the western gray kangaroo which you'll see behind me as well as the Bennett's wallaby and inside the Australia house the southern hairy wombat. What makes a marsupial a marsupial is that they have a pouch that they carry their young in. They range in size from very large. Um, the red kangaroo is the largest. They can weigh up to 200 pounds. Um, the smallest is a marsupial kind of mouse found in Australia. Uh, here we have the western gray kangaroo. Um, we have three males and three females in our mob. Um, right there we have Dodger and Pasha. Uh, the one on the right is Pasha. She is our oldest animal in our mob and she is 16. Um, you guys already saw when we introduced our new male, Quano. Um, he will be two this year and he is the youngest in our mob. Everybody else is kind of somewhere in between. So like I said, marsupials um, are animals with a pouch. The females have a pouch to carry the young in. Um, they are different from placental mammals, which is what we are, um, in that they have a very short gestation. So the time that the mom carries the baby in her, inside of her um, is only about 30 days. So they are really small when the mom gives birth. Um, and then those babies have to then climb their way as a little tiny jelly bean, climb their way into the mama's pouch, where they continue their development until they'll come out a couple months later when they're ready. How many species of kangaroo are there? I don't know. <laughs> I honestly don't, I don't know off the top of my head. There's the western gray kangaroo, uh, there's the red kangaroo, um, I believe there's a eastern gray kangaroo, um, and I don't know how many more there are. Okay, well maybe Raquel can look that up and let us know. <laughs> if it's Raquel A, she can. <laughs> uh, um, so, uh, what's the what's the difference between kangaroos and wallabies? Um, the, dis the difference between kangaroos and wallabies is really just size. Um, wallabies are almost like just a miniature kangaroo. Um, there's really no other other difference. So um, these kangaroos weigh right around 100, 120 pounds, um, and our wallabies are only around like 40, 40 pounds or so. Um, so they're just much smaller. How long can kangaroos live? Um, right around 20 to 30 years. Okay. Pretty, pretty similar to a, lo a lot of animals. Um, so what makes marsupials uh, really cool is there's a lot of them. So there's over 300 different kinds of marsupials um, and they're mainly found in um, Australia and New Guinea. Um, but there are a few found um, in the Americas. Um, there is only one in the United States, which is the Virginia opossum. Um, so that's pretty cool. So we do have one here in the Americas, but like I said, most are in Australia and New Guinea. Um, and they can kind of be found everywhere. So they, they inhabit lots of different habitats um, from brush to forests. Um, there are some quote unquote flying marsupials. They're not true flyers, they're gliders, um, like the sugar glider. Um, and then there are also some carnivorous um, marsupials, the Tasmanian devil. So they can be uh, herbivores, like uh, the kangaroos, wallabies, and wombats, meaning that they eat uh, primarily vegetation. Um, they can be omnivorous, meaning they can eat um, a wide variety of meat, um, plants, fruits, veggies, um, and then, like I said, the Tasmanian devil, which is carnivorous. So what do these kangaroos eat? So in the wild, they would eat mainly grasses and some um, brush material. Um, here at uh, the zoo, we feed them a concentrated uh, grazer grain um, for animals that would typically graze. Um, and then they get a lot of leafies, so uh, different leafies every day like romaine, butter lettuce, um, spinach, kale sometimes. Um, and then they get uh, some hard veggies to help uh, with their teeth health. So they get carrots and sweet potato and uh, some cracked corn is a good, uh, <laughs> it's Sydney, she's laying on her back. Oh. <laughs> if you'd like to see a marsupial vegging out. 
Oh my gosh. Enjoying yeah, the sun. I can't even see her. Where is she? She's up in the... Oh, that's... <laughs> I thought there was a rock. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, Raquel says there are four. Western gray, eastern gray, red, and... Um, I don't know how to say that. Antelopine, maybe. All Thanks, right. Raquel. Yeah. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks for your support. <laughs> Um, how long does uh, Joey stay in the pouch? Uh, so it depends on the species, but generally it's around six, six to nine months. Um, so they uh, are a mammal, so they are born with hair, but um, very little. Um, so when they first kind of start peeking their, their heads out of the pouch, um, they look a little bit hairless, but they do have hair. Um, so that's kind of the first thing you'll see. Um, they'll start kind of grazing on the grasses as the mom does the same. So you'll just see their little head and front ar little T-Rex arms coming out in the kangaroo and wallaby. Um, and then uh, they'll get stronger and they'll kind of hop out and then hop back in. Um, and then they will continue to stick their head in and nurse um, until they're weaned, which is usually around um, a year to 18 months. Um, so you'll see an animal that's almost the size of their mother um, still sticking their head in the pouch to nurse. How high can they jump? Uh, so it's not really about height. Um, kangaroos and wallabies, uh, their legs and power come from more the distance that they're able to jump. I don't, I don't know what that is off the top of my head. I can look that up and um, get back to you. So it's more um, distance that they jump than height. What are all the kangaroos' names? All the kangaroos' names. So we have three males. So right in front of us here is Dodger. Um, and then we have Welly, and we have Quano, our new male. And then the f three females are Pasha, who is the oldest, um, Sydney, and Holly. Cool. How tall do they get? Uh, so the western gray kangaroo is not quite as big as the um, red kangaroo. Um, the males are larger than the females, and um, I'd say when they stand on their, on their tiptoes, they are probably right around six, six feet tall. How many babies can they have at once? Uh, kangaroos, uh, marsupials in general, usually have um, one baby at once. They have a pretty complex and interesting uh, reproductive system um, that I'm not going to even try to get into here because it's very complicated and I don't want to misspeak. So um, they can have one baby and technically be pregnant with another baby but then make the pregnancy kind of pause so they're pretty cool um but one is your answer <laughs> how do you tell a male from a female um they are larger males are larger um and they have um I, the way you would normally tell a male from a female <laughs> <laughs> do they have pouches? Males do not have pouches, there but you, you can't really see the pouch on a female either unless you're um, actually physically touching them or they have a joey in it. Uh, they're pretty discreet. Um, it's not like it, it's not a very distinguishable pouch. You have to kind of touch it and pull it out. In order it's not to, just like a pocket. It is not a pocket. Okay. No. And actually in a lot of species, it's kind of just like a very small little flap that's barely a pouch. Um, the kangaroos have a pretty substantial pouch. Um, one of our keepers has done a, a phenomenal job of uh, training Sydney, who was a hand-raised animal, um, because she was uh, found outside of the pouch when she was young. Um, and one of our keepers, Diane, has done an outstanding job of doing a lot of training with her, and she actually lets her um, inspect her pouch. So that's pretty cool. So you actually can see it, because um, normally we don't get to see inside their pouches. Huh. It's kind of gross, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> How many of the kangaroos were born here? Um, two. Uh, Sydney and Welly were born here. And Sydney was outside the pouch. Was Welly still inside the pouch? Welly, yes. Because they weren't born at the same they time. They were not born at the same okay, time. Okay, no. gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, you want to hop over to the wallabies? Yes, let's hop. Am I literally happy? Oh my gosh! <laughs> I'm not gonna hop. <laughs> Everybody at home can hop, but I'll make them sick if I hop. <laughs> You're welcome. 
everybody. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so here we have our wallabies. Um, at Australia House, we have um, seven male wallabies. Um, we're kind of holding the breeding animals uh, for the for the Brookfield Zoo um, because we have uh, females and castrated males over at Wild Encounters. So if we get a recommendation for breeding, um, we usually bring a female or whoever is recommended to breed over here and do the breeding over here. Um, so we're kind of the holding holding spot. So you said kangaroos can be about six feet tall if they stand up on their tippy toes. Uh -huh. How tall do wallabies get? Uh, they're not very tall. They're like two and a half, three feet. And what did you already say all their names? <laughs> I did not say all of their names. Um, so we have uh, Lucky, Benny, Rizzo, P. Sherman, which is the best because that's from Finding Dory. <laughs> so the way we identify our um, wallabies and kangaroos is they have little notches in their ear that um, go with a number. Um, so his number is 42. So if you'll remember in Finding Dory, it's P. Sherman, 42 Wallaby Way. <laughs> so his name is P. Sherman. Shout out to Danny for that name. Um, so... P. Sherman, um, Mike, um, Galileo. Is that everybody? Benny, Mike, P. Sherman. All right. So I think that was everybody. for those who are joining late, could you explain again what the difference is between a wallaby and a kangaroo? Uh, yes, there's very little difference other than size. Um, they are both marsupials, which is what we're talking about today, which is animals with pouches and um, they're just a much smaller kind of version. So somebody just mentioned that there used to be the tree kangaroo yes. in Australia House. That's true. So how different from a regular kangaroo is a tree kangaroo? Uh, pretty different because they live in a tree. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that makes you very different. You have a lot of different adaptations. You eat different food. Uh, the kangaroos you know, and wallabies are more grass eaters, whereas a tree kangaroo, uh, I had, I did not actually work with tree kangaroos, so um, I do not know a lot personally about them um, and about their care, but uh, just from taking care of other animals that live in trees, I would assume that they have much different diets and different how adaptations. Lo how long do wallabies live? Uh, pretty much the same, like right around 20 years. Uh, same for the, same for the wombats right around 20, 20 to 30 years. <laughs> uh, what kind of gestation period do the wallabies have? Uh, again, pretty much the same. Uh, all marsupials are right around a month of gestation. So that's the time that the, the baby um, is inside the mom and then she gives birth right around 30 days. Um, and then that small joey um, which is about the size of a jelly bean, will make its way up the mom and into the pouch where, um, again, depending on the species of marsupial, um, they usually will like attach to the nipple um, because if you think about it, the mom is running around, hopping around um, at great distances, not heights. <laughs> and they, that joey needs to stay inside the mom's pouch. So um, they pretty much like attach to that nipple. Well, here's a question I haven't seen before. No goody. <laughs> <laughs> How do the joeys use the bathroom while they're in the pouch? Ah, oh, that is a good question. Um, they would just go to the bathroom in the pouch and the mom cleans it out. So the mom spends a lot of time. Um, that's a good indicator um, early in um, joeydom because it's not pregnancy because the baby's already there. But if, a, if an animal has a joey and you can't see pouch movement yet, it's a good indicator that there may be a joey there if the mom is spending a lot of time uh, grooming her pouch. So that's a, a very good first indicator. Do the wallabies and the kangaroos live together at the zoo? Uh, currently they do not. Um, it kind of depends on what we're doing um, with our yards, with, with whatever. Um, they can, uh, they can get along very, very easily. So. Um, it just kind of depends on if we want um, 
to have all the yards filled with animals or we want to do some enrichment and have different groups of animals together or if we need to do something with our emu which are also sometimes housed with our kangaroo and just it just depends on the yard space. Do they live in the same areas in Australia? Uh, no they do not. So where would you find a wallaby? Uh, they these wallabies are more uh, in New Guinea. Oh. Yeah. Okay. But similar like habitats. Similar habitats. Okay. Um, let's see. Hang on, guys. I got to scroll a little bit here. Uh, while Lynette's scrolling, I can tell you a little bit about our wombats. So since they're not out here, um, we are going to hopefully get to meet them in a couple weeks. But um, they are a marsupial too. Um, they... We have two females, um, mom and daughter, Cambora and Mia, and we also have Daryl, who is the dad. Um, and kind of what makes a, the wombats neat is their pouch actually faces backwards. So if you look at a kangaroo or a wallaby, the, the pouch kind of faces up, the opening faces up so that the joey can kind of hop in quickly if the mom's bent over. Um, but for the wombat, which is a digger and builds big tunnels and stuff underground um, you wouldn't really want your pouch facing that way because you'd be digging dirt right into your pouch so uh, the opening is actually towards the rear so that the baby comes in from the back instead of the, the front and dirt stays out of the pouch all right does the mom have to assist the baby getting into the pouch like after it's born um no if anything she may like smooth the hair um, but they don't, like, help it with their hands. At what age does the Joey start poking his little head out? <laughs> uh, so normally we see pouch movement, so without any head coming out or anything like that, right around three months. Um, and then, like, five, six, seven months is when you might start to see uh, head come out. Eight, nine months, you might start to see actual full Joey out of the pouch for short amount of time. How strong are their tails? Uh, they are strong. Um, so they use them for multiple reasons. Um, they can actually use them to stand up on their hind feet to give them a little bit better leverage if they're going to kick, um, which is their main form of defense. Um, you can imagine with those short arms, they don't really do much with those. They do some kind of like boxing um, and swatting at each other. Um, but if they really want to uh, hurt somebody, they'll, they'll kick them. Um, but the tail is actually mainly used for balance when they're hopping. Um, so it is strong, but you can kind of see this is cool. You can see how they use it when they're just locomoting without hopping. So they do use it as kind of a, a fifth appendage to, um, to navigate. What's the boxing behavior all about? Um, it's a dominance thing. Um, so if you introduce new males and they may be the same size or if there's um, competition for breeding, um, it's just a way to show who's stronger. It's just, you know, think about it in human terms. If you're just like pushing each other around and wrestling, it's their form of wrestling. Are there any babies right now? We unfortunately do not have any babies right now. Um, we had brought um, four females over um, last year to breed with one of our males, um, and he unfortunately did not get the job done. So um, we are talking to the SSP to um, see if we want to try again with him or if we want to try um, with a different male. So, Is their tail prehensile? No, it is not. So it just kind of acts like a counterbalance. Yep, it just acts as a counterbalance. Okay. Why do they have such long eyelashes? I know we can't really see from here, but when we were with the wallabies in a Hamill family uh -huh. Wild Encounters, you could see, see they how long really they are. long eyelashes. Yeah. Um, so like most animals or anybody who lives out in the elements, um, having long eyelashes is good to try to keep um, debris out of your eyes. Um, also for any close-ups you might have or <laughs> glamour shots, you know. <laughs> Why do they like to lay out in the sun like this so much? 
Why do you like to lay out in the sun? <laughs> I don't know. I love to lay out in the sun. I don't. It's good. Um, you know, vitamin D is good. It helps with, you know, bodily functions. And um, I mean, if you think about where they're from, they're from a pretty warm climate. So they, they are adapted to enjoy the sun. Yeah, speaking of being from a warm climate, how do they handle our winters? Uh, they do very well. They're very um, cold hardy. Uh, because while you often think of Australia and New Zealand and New Guinea as uh, very warm places, they actually get um, pretty cool overnight as well. Um, so a lot of animals have that adaptation to be able to handle extreme heat as well as um, some, some pretty, pretty strong cold. So um, we generally don't have to, um, we give them access to their shed and to some heat lamps when it gets colder. Um, but we very rarely, unless it's like a severe, long stretch of extreme cold, do we have to actually um, put them in for the night. So it's very nice for them. Uh, let's see. How do they communicate? Um, again, with that wrestling, um, they don't really make very many noises. Um, I'm trying to think if I've ever actually heard them make a noise. Uh, the only time I've heard them make a noise is when they meet um, animals of the opposite sex um, or if you, they're meeting an animal for the first time. So um, we don't really hear um, any vocalizations outside of those times. Um, so it would just be through just general body language. Do wallabies or kangaroos face any threats in the wild? Um, so they are not, thankfully very hunted or anything like that. Um, the wallabies are actually seen as kind of a pest species. There are so many of them. Um, the kangaroos are um, a little bit more endangered than the wallabies. Um, but like most of the wild animals, it's just um, habitat loss. I mean, we, kn we know from uh, over the last year, Australia, had some pretty severe wildfires um, and that was extremely damaging to a lot of the to the native populations there so um, right now it's it's natural stuff that is that is um, harming these animals so in the wild do they live alone or in groups they live in groups um, but there's not really a hierarchy so it's not like a wolf pack or something like that um, they just tend to like to be with other animals. It's always good for um, predation and stuff and such. Um, so I know that a group of kangaroos is called a mob. Yes. What do you call a group of wallabies? A mob. They're a mob too. Yep. Sorry, it's not more That's exciting. That's not very creative. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's about all I have. You want to wrap up? Yes. Well, I just want to thank you all very much for joining us again for bringing the zoo to you um, and for your continued support of Brookfield Zoo during this time. Um, and if you haven't already, um, please visit our website um, and feel free to uh, adopt an animal or share the care um, here at Brookfield Zoo. Thank you and have a great day.